Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, having a great day. We are back with some more X-Ray action today to end the week up after kicking off with it earlier this week in the Ultra Series and it's been incredible. If you've missed any of the games and the episodes from this week, I would strongly advise going back and checking them out and checking out the matches that we've had so far to see the progression of this team because it's been incredible. We're sitting on a nice record at the minute, we'll get into that in a moment, but if you have missed and you'd like to go back and check those episodes out, I would put a card up there for you and you can go and check those out. But just to recap the team, the team as always is in the description down below with a roll paste and a poker paste. Check it out, try it out, let me know what you think of it if you do and just to recap before we go into anything, we've got the Mega Requires. So we've got the Xerneas, Landorus, Therian, we've got the Tepafini, Incineroar, and that Sorina. So it's been incredibly fun so far. Um, we might change things up next week. We might come back and just start on Monday, play this team a little bit more until Wednesday, and then we'll play a bit more of the quirky things with the X-Ray build on Thursday and Friday. But without further ado, let's get some music on and get into this episode. So as always, guys, if you do enjoy the sort of content, please make sure to drop a like on the video down below. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content in general, and do, do leave your comments because, as I always say... I love, love, love hearing from you all, all the time. So, um, music, Giovanni for us to kick off with today. 9-0 with the team at the minute. Pretty good. Uh, 1657 rating, which isn't too bad. Um, so, hopefully, like I say, hopefully we can keep this up. The team's been in some really tight spots this week, uh, but we've managed to kind of overcome, like, all of those, those, those bad, bad situations and come out victorious. So... The team is performing extremely well, and uh, like I was saying in our last episode, I'm really enjoying it, and um, it is just one of those really solid teams that we've got access to now in this format that can just do so well. Um, and if there's guys out there, girls out there that are attending events in the next few weeks, I definitely recommend having a game plan against this sort of team because it is going to be very popular going into Berlin, or variants of it, uh, Daytona as well and other events alongside that so just keep that in mind when you're going into events and make sure that when you're practicing for these events you practice with friends against this particular team or a variation of this kind of team because it's something that will will cause you trouble it's a, it's a very solid team um it's taken a little bit longer to find our first opponent in the episode so what i'm going to do is just um cut in when we do bump into our first opponent so we'll be right back guys so we've got a first opponent of the episode. We've got a player from Portugal, which is very exciting, a lovely place in the world. So we'll hop straight into team preview. And our first opponent today is running a team of Rayquaza, Kyogre, Bronzong, Tapu Koko, Gengar, and Scrafty. So we've probably got a dual Mega team here. We've got the Mega Rayquaza and the Mega Gengar here. We've got um, predominantly speed control method here. It's going to be on that Bronzong with the Trick Room, so indicating that it's going to be a a slow bulkier Kyogre on this sort of build and then things paired with it to help it set up that trick room with the Scrafty with its Intimidate support, Fake Out support that'll help set up and neuter our physical attackers. The Tapu Koko there is going to be there for the terrain support for the rest of the team to prevent any sleep and things like that. But if we can deny the trick room that would be amazing um, because it means that we can get around this team a little bit easier. Um, although denying the trick room is extremely difficult for us. Um, especially with the Kyogre coming out onto the field. I think what we're going to have to try and do is utilize, like Incineroar is extremely good here for us because just having access to that Intimidate, especially for the Rayquaza, the Poison Scrafty, and then the Dark Typing for the, the Mega Gengar, the, the Bronzong, and having that Pivot option as well, turn one on that Mega Gengar. Uh, we will bring Tapu Fini. I think we definitely need Rayquaza. And do we bring Serena here or do we bring Xerneas? Hmm... Neither have a great time here, uh, but Xerneas might be a little bit of a better option for us going into this one. So we'll hop straight into it. Good luck to my opponent. And uh, I feel like this could be one of the more tricky matchups with the team that we faced this week. But let's see how we can approach it. we just got to take a time, like, we, like I always say you do in these games. Just assess what's in front of you and uh, see what you can do. Right. Gengar and Kyogre, a nice pink Kyogre, which I'm not really too fond of. If it Primal Reverts, I'd be a lot happier. Is it going to Primal Revert? Get the Misty Terrain up. Intimidate support. It's going to Primal Revert, it's the last thing to happen. Here we go! 
Yeah, no Scarf Kai, okay. I wonder how long into the format it's going to be before I stop saying it's not Scarf Kyogre. It's probably not too long to be honest. Should be seeing less and less of them as we go forward. But the Mega Gengar, uh, the Kyogre there. Um, now we have got access to Fake Out here so we could Fake Out into the Kyogre for sure. Um, and maybe get something else in. The problem is... Ah... Uh, if we Icy Wind with that Finning, we're still not going to be faster than the Gengar the following turn. But it, it would mean that we potentially can set something else up after the Finny goes down. Um, we could maybe predict the Kyogre Protect here and switch into Rayquaza. And it might not be a bad idea to do that just to preserve our Incineroar, to be honest. Switch in Rayquaza. And if I can lock in, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. That's really frustrating. Taking too long with our decision making here. We could get seriously punished on this one. Ah. We need the icy wind and we're not gonna do it. We're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be hazing, which is terrible for us. If we see the Kyogre protect, no we don't. We see just a double, I think it's gonna be a double into the Finny, which is really frustrating because we would have been able to get this icy wind off now. Oh, and then Rayquaza would have been in a position to get this Gengar the next turn instead of hazing like a fool. My opponent's like, what? What are you doing? Why are you hazing? And now Rayquaza's in a terrible position. But not in the, <laughs> not in the worst position, I guess. But not in the best position either. Um. Okay, let's... Mega Evolve. I'm hoping that the Gengar's attention is attracted more towards the Rayquaza rather than the Tapu Fini now. And we just Icy Wind and get this Icy Wind off. We're going to see the Kyogre switch out and the Bronze one come in. Okay. Well, if we lose Finny now, we get the Incineroar back in. So, still not ideal for us at all. Come on, Gengar, target down the... Okay, it's just protecting. That's fine. We could have heal pulse there as well. That would have been an option. But I think the Icy Wind, after our turn one play... Yeah, it's put us so far behind in this match. We can't switch anything out either now, which is a little bit of a pain. Um... But we can Dragon Ascent the Gengar. I think you've got to chase the, the Rayquaza here with Gengar, unfortunately. Um, and it does give us the opportunity to potentially heal Pulse with our Finny. It's a Sludge Bomb. Okay, you're going into the Finny. We do go down. And do you set the Trick Room up with Bronzong? Because the Dragon Ascent will be able to get the Gengar. <sighs> uh. If we see a trick room here, things aren't as bad. Things aren't great. It's a gyro ball. Okay. And we definitely don't take that. Right. Now we've got Kyogre to deal with. Big bad Kyogre. Oh, this is tricky, 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 tricky. Very tricky. Can we win this with Xerneas and Cinnamon? And it's all because of that turn one that we did. The turn one play where we where we just misclicked. Well, we didn't misclick. We ran out of time. And it happened so often. It's just, um, it's managing, talking. And then I'm not making excuses because I should be, I should be, like I've done this for long enough now. There should be no mistakes here. Um, and especially timing out. But... It does happen sometimes. You just can't beat yourself up about it. You just got to try and regroup and then see what you can do to come back in, in a game like this. Tapu Koko here. Could it have the Z move? Um, okay, come on. Come on, game lord. It's just taking its time. Hopefully we haven't dropped out. This is... Ah, uh, uh, this could be us because our internet is terrible. But maybe it's not. No, I think it is. It's taking too long to, uh, to reboot. And that, that's like, I've been here, didn't do that intentionally. 
that's really frustrating for us. Because I still feel like we have the opportunity there to geomancy fake out the Bronzong. Um, and because it's minus one, we're able to take the geomancies a little bit better. So we do have that option to take advantage of. What is happening with my DS? Okay, we'll come back when we're, we're back into a game. Okay, so we are back, guys. Um, I've had a little bit of an issue with my home broadband going down once again. Uh, so I've had to hook up to my hotspot on my phone, so hopefully we find another opponent we have. Fortunately, we've taken our first loss, which is really not very fair, but we'll get into our first match of the day, proper one. Hopefully our connection stays fine. <clears throat> So our next opponent is running a team of Rayquaza, Kyogre, Mimikyu, Incineroar, Landorus, and Celesteela. So quite a nice combination of Pokemon here. Not so common that you'll see that frequently. We've got the Rayquaza and the Kyogre restricted pair here. You've got a supporting cast of Mimikyu. It's going to have access to Trick Room there that we need to be careful of. Maybe to support the Kyogre and that Celesteela. And then double Intimidate with the Landorus and the Incineroar. Incineroar having the Fake Out support as well to help things set up on the team like that requires I like the trick room on that Mimikyu so we need to keep an eye on that and then the Celesteela which is going to be something that we find very difficult to hit with this team um, I think we have to rely quite heavily on our Incineroar here so right one of the things we could potentially do is go Incineroar Xerneas go Serena I think Serena would be very very useful for us here and I want to try and force a Xerneas setup in, in this game um, possibly by getting a, a cheeky Geomancy set up early on, getting the Intimidate support with, with Incineroar as well onto something like Celesteela could be really crucial for us and then I think we need our Rayquaza as our, as our last one here. So we'll lock in with these and uh, we'll get straight into this next one. <coughs> Good luck to my opponent as always. And uh, yeah, I do apologize. I'm having horrible issues with Virgin at the moment. And the worst thing is as well, uh, about a month ago, just because I want to do uh, more streams and I want to do better content, upload content quicker onto YouTube and things like that. So I upgraded um, uh, our account with them, uh, the service that I get with them to uh, the, the maximum speed broadband, well, fiber optic broadband that I can get. And I've had so much trouble since upgrading and it's been really frustrating to deal with. So I do apologize that streams have recently been affected. But I would I would really love it if you guys came by. It's always a nice, nice time. We do them on a Saturday morning now at 9.30. So we'll be streaming tomorrow morning if you're about. And there is the Primal Kyogre. I'm going to see Landorus Primal Kyogre come up for my opponent. Can we get the Geomancy off? That's the thing. Like, I feel like we, we're we not in a bad position to do it. Um, what do we not want to take? Like, I don't want to lose Incineroar. That's the big thing. We need to keep Incineroar around um, for for later in the game. That's the the, the big, big prerogative because of that Celesteela. Um, so, I don't really want to get Tectonic Raged. And I definitely don't want to get Water Spouted. But I... I mean, I don't really want to switch it out either. I want to make use of this this fake out. I'm going to go into the Kyogre here because I want to keep Incineroar. And I, I'd say more likely than not, the Landorus goes after the, the Xerneas. If not, then we get a free Geomancy here. Um, and forgive me, Cat, if you go down here, but the Landorus switches out. So you make the right decision there. And the Incineroar coming in for my opponent. That's fine. Because then the next turn we've got that Serena switch in and we can take advantage of that to get around any potential fake out support and just dazzle or... Oh, Kyogre going as well. Is a Celesteela coming in? Yeah, Celesteela. Okay. I wonder if the Incineroar on my opponent's side of the field's got Roll. At least we know there's no Trick Room element to my, what my opponent's got. They've revealed all four of their Pokemon already, which is quite nice. So we do proc a uh, power herb, get this geomancy off, and it sets us up quite nicely going into the uh, the next few turns. Um, one of the things we've got to be a bit wary about is the Kyogre switching back in on that Incineroar slot to prevent our uh, Flare Blitz onto the Celesteela because it's such an easy thing for my opponent to do. I think I will. Um, I'm going to protect. 
Well, do I protect? I feel like there's definitely a fake out coming from the opposing Incineroar, so I think I could get away with going Serena here and just going Dazzling Gleam because there's going to be a fake out and probably a heavy slam. If it's Flash Cannon, I don't really mind too much. And even Heavy Slam, it's not going to be doing as much as my opponent wants it to be doing. It's not like it's going to be a Gyro Ball. Could be a Gyro Ball coming out from the Celesteela, which I've just thought about now. And yeah, uh, could be pretty detrimental to us. There's the Fake Out. Uh, we do block that. Let's see what this Celesteela goes for. Okay, we get some nice damage into the Incineroar. There's it just a Leech Seed, it doesn't affect. Yeah, so that's fine. That's perfect for us because now we can nuke the Incineroar. We can switch back into our... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we can just switch back in. I mean, we could help in hand. I mean, the thing is I want to get an Intimidate onto the Celesteela, so that's the big thing. And I'm just going to Moonblast the Incineroar, get rid of that right now. If it is Heavy Slam variant, then the Intimidate's way more useful. Uh, like I say about the Flash Cannon, we've got the boost up already, so we're not too worried about that. It's just the Gyro Ball or Heavy Slam that would be the big thing. So makes more sense here to go for the Intimidate onto the Celesteela to kind of weaken it. Give Xerneas a better chance to cut through the potential Kyogre and the Rayquaza coming in after this. So we'll see what my opponent goes for. We're going to just switch Serena out, keep it around for later on. It's also going to be a nice option to have against potential Kyogre later on in the match. It does come down to that. The Moonblast now switches out from my opponent. Um, and we get rid of the instant roll. Now let's see, do we see another Leech Seed? Potentially? Yeah, Leech Seed again. Going into the Xerneas this time. Makes a lot of sense to go for that slot. But we've got Fake out this next turn so we can chase down this Kyogre. If we would like to. Because um, the Kyogre is the one thing that we need to get rid of before we can really deal with the Celesteela, which is making it quite useful. And I think does make it quite useful in this sort of call because of how it operates. It's it's able to sit around and have the protection from the Kyogre to really disrupt with the Leech Seed. And, you know, before you can really deal with it, you need to deal with the Kyogre. So that's a big threat. And all the time that you're concentrating on this Kyogre, the Celesteela is just sitting there able to do whatever it wants, really. So the Kyogre now going to hit the field for my opponent. Um, I'm going to get I'm going to get Incineroar out of here, and I'm going to bring in Rayquaza, and I'm just going to go for another Moonblast into that Kyogre slot. So the sooner we get rid of that, the better. And then we if we leave the Celesteela till the end, and we've got Incineroar left, that's like that is what we've got to try and do. Incineroar versus Celesteela, we just win. And also keeping Incineroar in the back to have the Intimidate for the Rayquaza is another nice option to have. Kyogre's likely to go for, yeah, Protect, and then it's going to try and Water Spout or Origin Pulse the next turn. But I mean, we've kind of got to pin this next turn because it can't double Protect. It either has to switch out. There's a Leech Seed again. It does break our Sash on Rayquaza, but we're not too concerned about that. Celestia's not putting on too much pressure. And my opponent's got the decision now. Do they keep the Kyogre in? Um, and take a Dazzling Gleam and a, dra a Dragon Ascent, which is what we're going to do. Or do they switch it out into the Rayquaza and, and have to deal with, with that? Um, it's hard. It's hard. I don't know what I would do in that position, to be honest, if I was my opponent. But um, we are going to Mega Evolve and just go for that Dragon Ascent and Dazzling Gleam. And I think the one thing about Celesteela that makes it a little bit different to maybe some of the other better Xerneas checks and why we don't see more of it is because it's it's not able to damage Xerneas as much as you kind of want it to. We're not even seeing the Rayquaza in this team. We're just going to see the Landorus come in now. We'll not get it with a Dazzling Gleam. But then the Kyogre's back in the same position the next turn. My opponent has to start throwing out some heavy slams at some point. You get the Delta Streamer. So there's a Dazzle. Celesteela could have also had Wide Guard as well. That's the other thing. Um, and we've got to kind of be mindful of that because we've only seen Leech Seed from it so far. 
to land up, going down. And my opponent choosing to opt in to keep the Kyogre around for the, the last part of the game. And there's a heavy slam. Let's see what this is like. I mean, it's respectable damage for sure. And with another Leech Seed, we might be in a little bit of danger from um, getting taken down. I think we probably are. So we need to be we need to be super careful, but we've got our end game that we need to do. We need to get rid of the Kyogre, and we need to um, we need to have Incineroar as our last Pokemon available. I'm really tempted to just double protect here because I think the Kyogre protects, and you go for a heavy slam into the Xerneas. Um, and I think my own, my opponent's best way to get back into this now is going for the protect with the Kyogre and then trying to protect the following turn. It's going to make things a lot more difficult if the Kyogre doesn't protect here. But I just feel like their hands kind of forced to make them protect because they've got to try and get the Xerneas with another heavy slam. So there's protect number one. Requaza, protect number two. Kyogre? I see wind! It doesn't protect! Ah. <laughs> okay. I mean, my opponent's doing all the right things here. Really, they are. Um, now, we're going to have to rethink what we're doing. I think we need to get Rayquaza out to get this airlock back up. Get this, rid of this Leech Seed. So, we'll switch in Serena. Go for a Moonblast into the Kyogre. If we lose Xerneas, we lose Xerneas. Um... But props to my opponent for um, for for being ballsy there and making the play, thinking that we will double protect and they will protect this turn. I can guarantee it. But we've got to try and get some damage onto it, so we put it in range for a Dragon Ascent. That's the big thing. I mean, it might not protect, but it's likely it will right now. <laughs> There's a protect. <laughs> okay. I mean, the better player the previous turn would have been switching in to uh, Serena with Rayquaza and then um, having a faint Moonblast this next turn to get around that potential potential Protect there from the Kyogre. But it's all alright still. It's still not too bad because we get Rayquaza in. And you know what? I think Rayquaza, or the Helping Hand Dragon Ascent, can probably... Well... Dragon Ascent in Power Whip is definitely going to be more than enough to get the Kyogre. And like I say, it's getting that end board position that we need to do to, to beat the Celesteela. Now the Kyogre's got to go for a double protect here. I feel. And I don't think the Celesteela's got. So they got Leech Seed, Protect, Heavy Slam. What's their last move? I wonder if it's Acrobatics. It could be. But we'll go for the Power Whip and the Dragon Ascent into Kyogre. We might lose Rayquaza here, but it's... Oh, it actually goes for it, but it fails. Okay, so we should be able to, to close this one up now. And then the next turn we can um, just protect Rayquaza for still around if we don't get the KO. Oh, we get it. Critical hit. I don't think it mattered too much because then the Power Whip would have finished it off anyway. Uh, they really need that double protect to come off. And um, we get a little bit of a... Power Whip into this Celesteela. What the one thing we don't want to do now is just grant this Celesteela free, um, free beast boosts because that's the one thing that like will put us in a really bad place. So we'll switch out Rayquaza and I'll get Incineroar in, and um, we'll start the uh, the Flare Blitz party. So, all right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, what do we want to do? Um, well, we can just power whip. We've not really got many options there with Serena, so just getting some damage off onto it is fine. It can't leech seed us as well, being a grass type, which is quite a nice thing to have on the field in front of a Celesteela that's going to try and leech seed the heck out of us. Be interesting to see if my opponent predicts the, the, the switch from the Rayquaza and leech seeds the Incineroar again. Gives them even more opportunity to kind of come through this. 
But as I say now, we've kind of done everything right up to this point with Incineroar to put ourselves in a position where we can take this match. We've just seen a heavy slam. It's going to be into our Incineroar slot. Um, and we can just help in hand Flare Blitz, to be honest. Or Faint Flare Blitz. I think Fainting Faint Flare Blitz is just the play because they could protect you. And we kind of deny them the play to go Leech Seed, protect, stall us out with just the feint, and there's the forfeit. So very good game to my opponent, and we are able to continue this on with the team. Even though we had that blip earlier on, I'm putting that down to my Wi-Fi. Even though it didn't look too good at the time, we still had an opportunity to kind of come back in that game. So it would be nice to at least play it out, um, but it has tarnished our record. But we'll be hopping into our next game and searching for our next opponent right now. So we don't want to save the game, and we'll just hop straight into it. Let's see what our rating's like now. Took a little bit of a tanking off that, that disconnect that we had before, which is a little bit of a shame, because we could have in a week maybe got up to 1700, but I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. We need to pick some music, don't we? Uh, let's go. You know of a legend for a change. We've got our next opponent from the United States, 1688 rated player, so we'll hop straight into team preview. Oh, and this is a nice team. We've got the Reindeer combination, the Kyogre and the Xerneas, the Restricted Pair here. We've got Nihiligo, another nice option. We've got Salamence, uh, Moongus, and the Incineroar. So, options of speed control. First things to identify always, I think, in a team preview are Salamence. It's got the option to Tailwind there. It's got Intimidate as well, another Intimidate with that Incineroar. It's got the Fake Out support. And then the other option of speed control that we can't you know ignore is Nihiligo does get access to Trick Room so it's an option there that it could take advantage of um, and it'll all be around supporting the Kyogre the Xerneas we know what it's going to try and do get that Geomancy up um, and my opponent's got a nice little way to shut down our Xerneas if they choose to with that Amoongus right Nihiligo is a little bit awkward for us to deal with um, especially because it hits Pretty much everything on our team for decent damage especially if it's got hidden power ice as well um but i do like landerous here just for the fact that we can hit the nihiligo the incineral for decent damage we've got double intimidate as well um we can nuke the kyogre as well as long as it's not scarf which it's not likely to be in this core what are we going to do though we need to, to make some decisions i'm going to bring incineral um and finny I'm going to bring Landorus and I'm going to bring Rayquaza and leave a uh, Xerneas behind for this one. We'll give it a little, uh, we'll, we'll let it sit out this one, just to be kind to it. Give it a little rest. It's been putting in a lot of work this week. Poor little Zern. Right, let's see. So we've got one, two, three, E, four, five. E, four, five. Uh, right. I'm gonna say Nihiligo, yeah, Xerneas Nihiligo, okay. We could get caught up by this Nihiligo, you know. But the one thing we could potentially do is his fake out. Fake out the Nihiligo, but I'm kind of, I just wanna fake out the, the Xerneas and got Icy Wind more than anything else, to be honest. Um. Because then Finny will be able to outspeed the Nihiligo and the Xerneas the next turn. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Uh, and just got Icy Wind. It does put us in a bit more of an awkward position with getting the Haze off, especially against the Xerneas. Um, oh dear. It's going to be the Poison EMZ. Wow. Huh. See you, Finny. Yeah. Nihiligo is one of those niche picks that does so well, you know. In this format, I do think... I, I said it all along in the Moon series, and it did such a good job there. It's an interesting one with the, um, the Poisonium. Oh, right. Gets a Beast Boost as well. Where is it? In Special Attack. All right. Oh, this is going to be difficult. Right, let's bring in Landorus. We know it's not sashed, Nihiligo, so we'll go down to an Earthquake. Ah, oh, the Xerneas has a real easy time setting up, and it's whether or not that Nihiligo has access to Hidden Power Ice as well. 
if it does, it makes things even more difficult for us. <sighs> Do we just let Incineroar go down? Uh, and give another beast boost? That's the problem. That is the big problem. I'm gonna. S oh, I need to switch in Rayquaza, to be honest. It's just we're gonna take a massive chunk of damage. And I'm gonna go for the Tectonic Rage into the zone. You should feel like I've got to do it to try and just deny that Geomancy. Nihiligo switches out. It's not got a hidden part ice, so. Yeah, this isn't ideal either. But it's not the end of the world. Because we're gonna get a Snarl off. And we've still got Rayquaza in the back. Um, no, we're not getting a Snarl off, sorry. We're going to get Rayquaza in, so we've got access. We're not intimidated. We've got access to this extreme speed, which we can... Okay, Xenia's protecting this turn. <sighs> Game's not over by a long shot. Any damage here is great for us, really. Because then if they go for the Geomancy the next turn, we can get in our Incineroar. It's just about preserving this Sash now and Rayquaza. Um, hmm. We need to protect. And I think we need to get Incineroar onto the field as soon as possible. So we'll retreat lander. Let's keep it around for a little bit later on. And we'll protect Ray. We're given a free Geomancy here, but it's just a fake out into the Ray. We could have went for an Earthquake, but we are minus one with that. With a lander, and I think we've got more, more room to kind of get around this Xerneas this next turn by going fake out into the Incineroar and Swords Dancing. And hoping that the Xerneas protects for, for the fear of the, the fake out dragon ascent into it. And I think they're probably likely to do that. So I'm going to go Swords Dance and I'm going to go into Incineroar. And then we've got a Sash to fall back on so we can deal with the Xerneas. <coughs> we've just got to hope that the Xerneas protects here. If it doesn't protect and it attacks, then I think it's game over. So, here's a moment of truth. There's a protect. That's good. That's perfect for us, actually. Okay. And there's a sword stance. And the Xenius has protected that last turn, so we can take it down this next one. And we have to Dragon Ascend it, though. We have to Dragon Ascend it. And it's likely we lose uh, Rayquaza to a Dazzling Gleam. And a U-turn. But there could be worse things. And Cinero, we're not gonna lose Rayquaza then. We're gonna see the Nihiligo come in. What we're we gonna see the Xerneas do? Dazzling Gleam, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Takes us down to our sash. Okay. So we'll pick up the knockout onto the Xerneas. And a Dragon Ascent will be enough to take the Nihiligo down. And it, we've still got we've still got uh, Landorus to, to utilize as well. So it's not over just yet. We know it's not sashed or scarfed or anything like that because of that Z move. <coughs> but even a minus, like even a plus one Dragon Ascent, even though it's resisted on Nihiligo, I'd still say we probably have enough to take it down. Um, I wonder if the Kyogre makes its appearance now. The plus one, we should be able to deal with the Kyogre, especially Earthquake. Dragon Ascent would be enough. Be interesting to see what my opponent brings in though. Is the Kyogre? Hmm. Very interesting indeed.
Okay, let's think about this. What are we going to do now? Because we've not got our airlock, but we do have to beat 9 Liga. I feel like 9 Liga probably... Like, I want to... I think what I'm going to do is just protect Rayquaza. It's just I want to get an Earthquake off. If we lose Landorus, that's the big thing here. We could just double protect to see what my opponent's going to do, to be honest. Um, but the, the problem is with doing that, the Incineroar gets a free switch in. So we, I think we might be better off just attacking and go for the Kyogre and just go for the Earthquake as well. Yeah, go Dragon Ascent into the Kyogre and Earthquake. Oh... Okay, we're going to get it. If this Nine Ligo hasn't got Hidden Part Ice, then it does mean that Landorus can get the Earthquake off and probably kill both. Okay, the Kyogre's not even an issue now. Okay, we should get the Earthquake off into the Nine Ligo. Can we do it? The rain is lifted. Power Gem. Where are we going? Okay, and now there's just the Incineroar left. So we... <laughs> Man, you know what? Like, the times where I feel like, okay, this, this, we've lost this. Like, turn one, it goes bad, and then we manage to, like, just pull ourselves back into games. Um, this team's incredible. So we knock out the Nihiligo. And then the Incineroar's the last thing to deal with. But we've got our own Incineroar to come in. And although we have to probably Earthquake our own, our own Incineroar at some point, it's fine, isn't it? Ah, it's all okay in the okay corral. So, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever have a better week with the team on the channel. It's been incredible. I'm going to try and do better next week, of course. But um, it's been an, an insane week uh, for us on the channel this week. I mean, every game's been absolutely amazing. And with such a solid team as well. It's, uh, it's been really, really great to um, to be able to do this. So uh, just to preserve our Incineroar this turn, uh, we'll rock slide rather than anything else. And there's the forfeit. So I'm just going to say great game to my opponent. Really big props for bringing that Nihiligo as well. Really nice seeing that there. And um, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed this week's episodes, all the matches this week. It's been incredible. Thank you so much for all of the support that I get always on the channel from the comments to the likes to just the views in general and I hope you continue to enjoy the content it really means a lot that we've got such a great community here I do see it quite a lot but it does mean a lot and um, I'm going to end it up there and end on a nice note have a great weekend guys thank you so much for tuning in and watching and I will see you all on Monday for another episode of our VGC 2019 battle series so until then take care and bye bye